Hi hi everyone. It is really special to join all of you here at Internet Age Media. Honestly, I couldn't ask for a more fitting place to hang out. I hope you're all doing well and that you're enjoying your time out here. As you're probably noticing right now, I am not physically present. I wish that it were easier for us to interface between these spaces, but I know that it will be different in time. Maybe I'll meet you in here next time in a different way. Before I get started, I'll share a brief background about myself. My name is Luther Boavdon. I'm an artist, avatar, and curator working on the internet. Given the way that I work and currently exist, I encourage you to connect with me online. My chat room, Eternity Chat, is open for access via Discord. You're welcome to join me if you have any questions. So a lot of my peers, and myself included, have this issue about describing their processes. I think this applies to most people now, as we look at the interdisciplinary nature of making and doing. New media is such a common descriptor, but it is still a really ambiguous one. It is sort of a pat on the back, to say new media every time. But these things aren't, and won't always be new. As much as I can, I try to stay away from declaring the medium. Instead, I think about things like this. I don't have an orderly word cloud for my work. Mine is more of a turbulent, changing thing that would likely cause a bunch of bumps during a space flight. My process is constantly colliding, bouncing off, avoiding, or remaking parts of itself. I had the pleasure of listening to Martine Sims give a presentation recently, and I really bonded with her idea of versioning. Patches, updates, remasters, edits, I like that a lot. I've spent decades inside of virtual environments. In many ways I came of age alongside the internet. My early years in DOS prompts, my adolescence inside of role-playing games. Blood rate, being surprised by new data storage descriptors. Megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte. Even in the early years I was enamored by cyberspace. Space, as a location, the cow pattern print of Gateway 2000 product boxes. The suggestion of the field of nature. Wide open spaces. Bliss, of course, as animals, humans desire the patterns related to their corporeality. For now, I think this is all right. My work often focuses on locations, virtual environments. Club Rothko, a labyrinth of nightclub rooms, chambers, corridors. Frontier study. A view of the harness. The control and hyper study that technology has placed on the physical world. My virtual self. Looking at how and what I will become as this technology continues to develop. Today, I am going to be focusing less on my specific practice and more about my reflections on the current ecosystem of the internet right now. Some of my hopes for what lies ahead and what we can do to plan accordingly. 
out here in this landscape, I've actually grown quite fond of nature. Both aesthetically and conceptually. As Alan Warburton described very well, people have begun to look beyond the uncanny valley. Hi Alan, I hope you're having a nice time there. I believe that this is an important moment right now. A migration from a former place with technology. Leaving the valley, in search of new spaces. Following the streams of data that we have collected over many centuries. It still surprises me every day how people have yet to take a firm position about their personal data. I will say it again and again. Your data is more valuable than the services you give it to. Your data is more valuable than the services that you give it to. It is this information that constructs what is over the horizon. Data, the prima materia. Besides being a terribly common cliché tattoo, or a melodramatic statement of grandeur, I think that this symbol has very practical reflections of this moment. Infinity, sure. I like to think of it as a reflexive view of how the next stages of our development can take place. As two vectors, in exchange with one another. The left, our past and present, date and technology, centuries of labour, work and development. LOL, it is amazing to think how much has changed just in the past several decades. The right, the future, and simulated outcomes, if not the future we take, the future that we simulate, through various fictions, hypotheses, and experiments. I am interested, in this part. The exchanging space, where our efforts move forward into the future, and where the future returns as something built from the records of time and history. I refer to this as the estuary, a tidal intersection of temporal media, historical records, literature and archived information, meeting with machine learning, procedural generation and immersive entertainment. For now, we contribute the hyper-collection of data, packing up our things, graphing all things, plotting every map, documenting every detail, building the best dataset. We have seen time and time again the works of science fiction becoming the framework for our realities. Devices, aesthetics, personalities, waiting in time with their potential to be rendered. Formerly, this has been applied mostly to things like computers, interfaces, things that emerge out of nostalgia, utopian dreams and fandom. If you'd played any video games in the 90s and early 2000s, you got a pretty good preview of technology for the next few decades. Minimaps and waypoints, heads-up displays, character modeling, face and body motion capture. Between these games, studios and major motion pictures, so much of today's technology was simply beta tested within these simulations. It is only a matter of time until these same tools make their way down from the privileged few and create opportunities for us in the general public to make use of them. Already, tools like Unity, Unreal Engine, and other rendering engines have made significant leaps in how we materialize our thoughts, art, products and experiments. As it goes, if you have good resources, you have a wider palette to work from. Passing to the other side of the estuary, to a future or simulated environment, we can dream a bit about what tools may become available. Just as we looked at gaming from the past few decades, we can look ahead in the same way. Following a rational series of developments, let's fast forward. Even today, a 3D scan of a figure can already be animated quite easily. Soon enough, consumer motion capture will permit accurate 3D file making of individuals. Advanced photogrammetry techniques will permit extreme level of detail when surveying cities, 
landscapes, homes, and other spaces. Advanced game engines will likely no longer be called game engines and will become practical renderers for this sort of media. Procedural scripting will learn to improve itself and in turn provide dynamic assistance in handling all of these different parts. Cinema, gaming, social media, performance, narrative, many of the things I shared in my word cloud wind tunnel will merge. Content containers instead of content creators. The celebrity, as we know it now, burns brightly and quickly in the eyes of the public. However, as we wander into these new spaces of the estuary, their longevity may begin to take a new shape. The simulated candle in the wind never extinguishes. A life's work becoming a second life's work. They make some day take the stage or screen as Hatsune Miku does. They may become models and pose like Lil Mikel does. Carrying their data outwards toward the estuary for a future simulator to resume. Just as any ventures into the wilds have gone before, there are many perils that come with new terrain. There will be misuses, hacks, deletions, cyber scandals and stratifications. Semi-posthumous defunct pop stars falling into auction houses. The wealthy collecting and steering the wills of their favourite content containers. Large social networks allowing third parties to absorb personal data and use it for their own political purposes. Well, the last part is already true. What we can do, before we create a round of virtual colonialism, is create discourse. Hold accountable, the industries and legislation that demarcate our access. The open internet is, and will always need to be, a human right. No matter how unexpected our futures may be, we cannot allow the formation of walls. Gatherings like these, whether they occur in the space of your devices, or in conversation with those in the room with you, are what define this estuary space. It is how we choose to converge these streams, perspectives, feeds, timelines, family G's, chat transcripts, archives, entire concerts filmed on cell phones. All this data belongs to us, and it may be what remains of us, when we are here no longer. I encourage you to go for a surf tonight. Download some high resolution images from Google Image Search. Join the Omega chat room and talk to some strangers for a while. Have a long walk with the Wayback Machine. Find your angsty teen pics inside of your photo bucket. Do you still have a live journal? Go 3D scan your family, record a podcast with them. Save your files. Back up your files. Save your files. Back up your files. We may not know the seas quite yet, or what greater body exists on the distant side of my tidal hypothesis, though I can already imagine our later selves, looking back at these early thoughts. Maybe I'll see you there, on the shores of something else. Again, many thanks to Internet Age Media for this opportunity to join you all. It is an honour to get to join you, in the ways that I can. My name is Luther Boavdon, and I'll be here, online. Thank you.